Hey guys, my name is Robin French Schmidt. This is the Bath Biz and Foam YouTube channel, and today I'm going to talk to you about bath bombs and humidity. A lot of people, when they first start making bath bombs, they have the question like, what is the best humidity to make bath bombs in? So, if you're wondering why this matters, I'll tell you that in a second. But first, let me answer the question, okay? I'm just gonna get straight to the point. The best humidity to make bath bombs in is your average humidity. <laughs> I see this question posted in groups and a lot of people will respond, hey, your humidity needs to be between 30 and 40% or 45% and 50% or 35% and 40% I don't know. this is like very strict range where people like will say that your humidity has to be to be able to successfully make bath bombs. And I agree that controlling your humidity is key to making bath bombs, but what is the best humidity for you is going to be the average humidity where you live. Period. If you love making bath bombs or if bath bombs are your business, you need to be able to make bath bombs any time of the day any time of the year. You can't wait for these like perfect dates. And look, I live in Houston, Texas, and we joke that we have like five nice days of weather a year because our weather here is terrible. It's always hot and it's always humid. And our average humidity here is in the 70 to 80% range. That means that most of the year, it's extremely humid outside. So our humidity is always through the roof. It's, it's insane. There are days when it is 100% humidity outside and it's not even raining. It's just like, that's just it. It's just that, that's how humid it is. And you walk outside and you're immediately drenched in sweat because your body's like. <laughs> so if I waited for the perfect day or the perfect weather to make bath bombs, I would never be making bath bombs. And like, that's my business, that's what I do. So if I had to wait for the perfect day to make bath bombs, I would never be making bath bombs. I developed a recipe for myself that works day in and day out when the humidity was high. And nine months out of the year, this recipe worked perfectly for me. There could be a hurricane coming through and I would be making bath bombs. I literally have pictures in my old house um, where I had a big window in my workroom and I pulled the drapes up so you could see the rain just coming down and pouring in and I was sitting there making bath bombs happy as a clam. So I developed a recipe for myself that worked really, really well. That is one of the recipes that we sell on Bath and Foam and I'll talk about that in a second. Now, I said that that recipe worked for me about nine months out of the year and here's why. We don't have a lot of dry time in Houston, but the dry time that we have was enough to affect how well my recipe worked. I really think it's a mixed thing though, because, hold on, where's my humidity thing? Ah, okay. My humidity is at 50% right now, which for me, that's usually the time when I have to switch from the high humidity to a low humidity. Like technically the high humidity recipe can work with 50% and above, but I find it works best with 60% and above. And I had to do things like add extra oil or uh, lessen the amount of hardeners that I had in my recipe. Over time, people began to ask for my recipe. It was some, it's like, I think the second or third, probably the second recipe that we sold on Bath Biz and Foam was the high humidity bath foam recipe. So a lot of people were using it, they really liked it. So one of the things is that people with low humidity were buying the recipe and it didn't work that great for them. Like it worked okay, but they had heard all these fabulous things about it. So they bought it and then they're like, it doesn't work perfect for me. And I'm like, what is your humidity? And then they would tell me, my humidity is 45%. And I'm like, well, that's why I did it. it's a high humidity recipe. It's a recipe that's intended for higher humidity. And they would say, well, so-and-so says that they use it and they have low humidity. And I was like, yeah, but that's, it's not intended for that. I can use a machete to cut my hair, but I don't, that's a little bit overpowered for what I need, right? Like I don't, so all the, there's the things in the high humidity recipe that weren't necessary or needed in the low humidity recipe. So last year we took the time, we had like a focus group and they helped us develop our low humidity trio. So we have three recipes now that come in this trio. And one of the questions people ask is what counts as low humidity and what counts as high humidity?
What is humidity and why does it affect bath bombs? Good question. Humidity is the amount of water vapor that is in the air. That's pretty easy, pretty simple to understand. Why does it affect bath bombs? Well, that's because bath bombs are a product that are made almost finished. They're almost done. The last step to completing a bath bomb, to finishing a bath bomb, is to actually put it in the water. So as makers, we have to create a product that will activate when it's in contact with water, but not activate the rest of the time. And so it's like almost ready. Like we get it 90% of the way there and our customer has to finish the last process of making a bath bomb. Basically, the amount of humidity that's in the air affects your recipe. This sucks, that, su that sucks, because I can give my soap recipe to somebody in Spain and barring a few differences in like fragrance oils and stuff like that, our recipes are gonna turn out the same. But if they, I give my bath bomb recipe to somebody who lives 20 minutes away, it may not work for them. Ah, here's the deal. You need a recipe that works for you. Nobody else, you need it to work for you. So here's things that can happen when your humidity is wonky. For me, ideal humidity, you're gonna scream when you hear this if you make bath bombs on a regular basis. Ideal humidity for me is between 60 and 80%. The higher, the better. <laughs> I like my humidity high. It makes my recipe super easy to work with and that's what I like. I have a friend who is in Odessa, which is a part of Texas, and it's very dry out there. And they were telling me like, oh no, my humidity is at 48%. And she sent me a picture of her shower steamers all puffed up and activated at 43%. At 43% for me, my recipe quits working and I have to switch to a different recipe to get it to work. I will say it again. The humidity that's gonna work best for you is the humidity, the average humidity where you live. All right, so there you are, living your best life, making bath bombs, doing your thing. You've got, your, you've got it in your groove. You're doing your thing now. You've got your bath bomb life going. You finally got the hang of it. You're making the molds work, okay? You got the fizzy, you got the foamy, you got all the things you want. And then spring rolls around and the weather changes on you. Here's indications that your humidity is too high for your current standard recipe, warts. <laughs> warts are gonna be these big bubbly things that come up out of the bath bomb and they're like, ooh, they look really bad. They're just a cosmetic thing. They're not gonna affect how the bath bomb performs, okay? They suck, but it's not the end of the world. Acne. Acne is similar to warts. Warts are big, Acne are little tiny surface activation that kind of goes across the top of the entire bath bomb. Whereas a wart is like a single activation spot, acne is gonna be all over the bath bomb. Another thing that might indicate that your humidity is too high for your recipe is that your recipe just won't dry. Um, it's been a week and you pick it up and it feels soggy. <laughs> the bath bomb feels weirdly soggy and just strange, like it just doesn't feel right. Another indication that your humidity may be too high for your current standard recipe is cracks. Now this kind of sucks because you can get cracks with low humidity and you can get cracks with high humidity, but there's a difference in how the cracks appear and look on the bath bomb. Other things that can happen are your mix sticking inside of your mold. I might miss some indications that your humidity is too high for your recipe, okay? But those are the biggest ones that I can uh, tell you about. Oh, swelling. <laughs> swelling is another thing that can indicate that your humidity is too high for your standard recipe. So you have your standard recipe, you got, you're doing your thing, but it starts to swell. You finish them, you make them, you come back, they're swollen. They're puffing up, okay? It's basically acne, just like, more. These things can indicate that your humidity is too low for your current recipe. So you got your current standard recipe, you're loving it, 
and you go to make bath bombs and they will not hold together no matter what you do. You've added more binder, you've added more oil, no matter what you do, you cannot get them to hold together. You put them together and they just fall apart. That can be an indication that your humidity is too low for your current recipe. Another thing that can happen is that your bath bombs sort of dry too quickly. So the core of the bath bomb is still moist and wet and the outside is drying too quickly and you get these cracks that happen throughout the bath bomb. So that could be an indication that your humidity is too low for your standard recipe. So cracks that occur with low humidity are gonna be what I call constriction cracking. So that means the inside is moist and wet, the outside is dry and it's going <laughs> It's sucking that, it's like, and the cracks are just gonna be like the Grand Canyon kind of cracks across your bath bomb. They're gonna be deep. They're gonna be going into your bath bomb and be very deep cracks, okay? Um, swelling cracks, cracks that occur because of swelling because of humidity that is too high. Swelling cracks happen because usually there's a wart underneath the surface of the bath bomb and it's pushing up against the surface of the bath bomb. And as it's doing that, it's creating a crack. So this uh, uh, high humidity crack is gonna be like a swelling crack. So you're gonna have a crack like this. Whereas a constriction crack, a low humidity crack is gonna be like this. It's gonna turn in, it's gonna go deep into the bath bomb. I hope that that helps. I'm sorry that cracking can be an indication of low humidity and high humidity. This is my life, okay? Another indication of low humidity would be dusty, crumbly bath bombs. This can still happen with high humidity as well, but to me, this is an indication, a big indication that your humidity might be too low for your current recipe. Dusty, crumbly bath bombs. What else is there? Another indication that your humidity might be too low is your bath bombs just fall apart. They like turn to dust. You go to pick it up and it goes and it falls apart. That sucks, but it can happen. You spend all the time making it. You come back in the next day, you go to pick it up. It's like turns into a cloud of dust. It sucks. Now, not to confuse you even further, Some of these things can also occur because you're using the wrong binder. Some of these things can occur because you're using the wrong clays. Some of these things can occur because of the surfactants that you've chosen. Some of these things can occur because you use too much binder or not enough binder. Look, I didn't choose the bath bomb life. The bath bomb life chose me, okay? It's not easy. Nobody said it would be easy. Whoever told you that lied. Did I tell you that? I'm sorry if I told you that. So you're having problems with your bath bombs. You're like, it's cracking. I don't know if it's constriction cracking. I don't know if it's swelling cracking. It's just cracking and I hate it and it won't stick together. And I don't know what to do. No fear, I got you. Okay, so here's some things to do if you have a standard recipe that you like, you don't want to change, you have a standard recipe that you like, and your humidity is going wonky on you. So your humidity is normally high and the weather has changed, it's dropped, it's low. Here's what you can do to make your recipe work for you. Number one, reduce your hardeners. So reduce the amount of cow and clay, cornstarch, or cream of tartar that you're using in your bath bombs. Reduce that. Like I generally have to do it in half at least. And then I just keep, you know, tweaking it on that. So make a small batch. Don't make a big, don't make, don't invest all your resources into this. Okay. Make a small batch, test it, see how that goes. Okay. Take lots of notes, lots of notes. Notes are key, 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 key. Take notes. Okay. Reducing hardeners. Number one, number one thing I can tell you, reduce hardeners. Number two, this is weird. Increase your oil. Increase your oil in your bath bombs because most people are like, oh, it's not sticking together. I'm going to add more binder. That's usually not the way. Okay. Usually the way is to increase your oil. 
That's going to help a lot if your humidity has dropped. Other things that you can do if your humidity has dropped is test out your binder. Okay, Ch change out your binder a little bit. I use water for the most part as my binder. If the humidity drops, I might actually do a 50-50 blend of rubbing alcohol and water. You might have to test out different binders. But here's the deal. Only change one thing at a time, okay? Don't make all these changes and then, like, think that, like, because then you don't know what actually worked. Or fine, change everything at one time. I don't care. Finally, <laughs> finally, if your humidity has dropped, one of the things you can consider doing is switching your hardener. You may be using Calen clay and you need to switch to cornstarch. You may be using cream of tartar and you need to switch to something else. You may be using all three, like me, and you only need one or two. So, hardeners, oils, binder. Hardeners, oil, binder. Those are the things that you're gonna need to tweak. Let's come over here to something I'm very comfortable with. What if your humidity is low and it has suddenly risen? Oh. Okay, so your humidity is normally low. You have a standard recipe that you like, but your humidity is normally low and it has risen. What do you do? I got you, girl. I got you. Okay, that's this, this is where I live. I live in the high humidity area. Okay, Psst. it's gonna be the same things. Hardeners, if your humidity is normally low and it has increased, you're going to need to likely increase your hardeners. I typically use all three of the standard hardeners, cream of tartar, Callan clay, and cornstarch. I like all three in my recipe. They all three do different things. That's an entirely different video, so I'm not gonna even go into that, um, but they all do different things. So. You may need to increase those. If you don't want to use cornstarch and you want to use something like tapioca starch, um, just be aware that it's more absorbent. So you're going to have, you know, you're using a recipe that is a, you're, you're using an ingredient that is typically a drier, even though this is, cornstarch is a hardener, tapioca is a drying agent. So if you have those types of things in your bath bomb recipe, you might need to Swap them out. Talked about that already. I need to swap them out for other things, but also you're probably going to need to increase them. <laughs> Next up, oil. <laughs> oil. You might need to increase your oil. I know it's confusing because I already said if your humidity has dropped, you might need to increase your oil. And now I'm saying if your humidity has increased, you might need to increase your oil. That's just because I'm going to be really honest with you. I don't think enough bath bomb recipes use enough oil. Like, I just don't think that they use enough oil in general. So, I don't know. It's, I, it's, it's a good ingredient. Oil gets your mix wet without having to add binder. So then it makes it easier to work with. So, like, increase the oil. It's, that's a good, it's a good tip. It's a good tip. Take that tip. Use it. Do it. Same three things. Hardeners, oil, binder. That's it. Okay, so for low humidity, um, it's you're, you're normally in low humidity and now your humidity has suddenly increased. Um, hear me out. Have you tried using water as a binder? I know that this is weird and it feels counterintuitive, um, but high humidity and using water as a binder is a great, it, it works. I don't know why, I'm just telling you to try it, it works. Just make sure if you're mixing it in well, like take, take the mix and like squish it between your hands like this and go like this and squish it. Mix, mix it in, mix, mix it in. So basically, if your humidity has dropped, if your humidity has raised, the three things that you're going to need to pay attention to are your hardeners, your oils, and your binders. Your binders. 
Sometimes um, you need to keep in mind that your oils might need to switch. You might need to use a liquid oil where normally you use a hard butter. You might need to switch up your binder. Usually you're using rubbing alcohol and now you need water or you need water and rubbing alcohol, right? You might need to switch that up. You're using cornstarch, you're using cow and clay. You need to add cream of tartar. You need to add, you need to just tweak it. You just need to tweak it. Did I help? Did I make it worse? If you don't want to tweak it, I fully understand that. It took me several years to get a perfect recipe that I love and I still tweak it all the time. So if you don't want to tweak it, you don't want to go through that process, you can always come check us out, bathbizandfoam.com. We have our high humidity recipe that is formulated to work in high humidity. It's not humid proof, um, I still can get surface activation. I still can get warts, but it's formulated to work very well in high humidity to give you a lot of working time and to feel amazing in the bathtub, okay? If, on the other hand, your humidity is low, probably most bath bomb recipes are gonna be fine for you. So I am not a very good salesman. Probably most bath bomb recipes are gonna be fine for you because most bath bomb recipes are geared for low humidity. If you live in an area that has low humidity, it's probably not going to be hard for you to find a bath bomb recipe that works for you. Like most bath bomb recipes are geared towards low humidity. However, we wanted to create a recipe that had the same attributes as our high humidity recipe, which included long working time, really easy to work with, and an amazing feel in the tub and the water. Um, so that's why we developed our low humidity recipe and that's a trio. So if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to not tweak, you don't want to do it. You don't want to mess with all that stuff. Also, again, come visit us at bathbizandfoam.com. I'll include links in the description and you could purchase one of those recipes. So totally an option for you, but I'm saying if you have a recipe you like, you can tweak it and do all those things. But if you don't want to do all that and process, we've already done some of the footwork for you. So. You may still have to tweak the recipe a little bit though. That's kind of the nature of the game. You may still have to tweak it a little bit, but we have set the groundwork for you, okay? Last thing that I wanna talk about is a dehumidifier. Dehumidifier. This is game changing, okay? Get a dehumidifier. They can be expensive. You can get a small one. You can get a small one for just like the area where you dry your bath bombs. But dehumidifiers are going to be an amazing attribute for you if you're making bath bombs on a regular basis and you want to control the humidity. Say your humidity fluctuates quite a lot throughout the day. Or even for me, I have the high humidity recipe and I still use a dehumidifier. Now, I turn it off while I'm working so that the humidity in the air while I'm working is up where I like it. And then when I leave, I turn on my dehumidifier and I allow that to do its thing. And if you live somewhere that's incredibly dry, like 12% humidity, 5% humidity, you might want to consider a humidifier. So same thing. I've, I've never owned a humidifier. I don't have to worry about that for the most part where I live, but same thing. A dehumidifier is going to be taking a uh, water vapor out of the air and a humidifier is going to be adding it to the air. So Either of those can help a lot in controlling your humidity in your workspace. You can check your humidity online and it can say you have 40% humidity outside in your area where you live, but in your house or your work room where you work, your humidity could be completely different. <laughs> I discovered this when, uh, when I first started making bath bombs, I just had a little room in our house where I made bath bombs. And when we moved two years ago, we moved into a new house. I built a workshop. I have a new window unit in my workshop. And what I discovered was that even though my humidity recipe is for high humidity, once again, I'm going to repeat this to be very clear. It is not humid proof. Okay. So I had tons of activation and I was like, holy. Anyway, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> So I had to get a dehumidifier. I already had a dehumidifier, still wasn't working. I needed to move it to an area where I had to, had to tweak my drying process. Tweak, tweak. Anyway, 
One of the things I discovered was when I moved into my new workshop is that even though I had a dehumidifier in there, there were still, you know, drafts and stuff like that. So I learned to keep my fresh pans closest to the ground. Warm air rises. Warm air is moist air. So therefore keeping my pans as low as possible, especially when it was raining, helped. I also got a cover for my drying area, which I don't use anymore, but I needed it at the time. And I discovered that my window unit had a setting called dry. So I could have my window unit dry and my dehumidifier dry and they could work together to help control my humidity. So why did this happen when I moved to my workshop but didn't happen when I was in my other house? That's because in my other house, my AC unit had a dehumidifier that was built into the HVAC system. And this is something that I learned and now you're learning it too. So congratulations. You probably never wanted to know this, but your HVAC system probably has, or if it's newer, okay, it likely has a dehumidifier that's built into the system. And so your humidity in your house could be 40% and your humidity outside could be 70%. So what's that mean? That means that you can't go online and say, hey, Google machine, what is my humidity? And take that as your humidity. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. Here's a little tool I think we could all be grateful for. It's called a hygrometer. It's called a hygrometer. It's called a hygrometer. 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 It's called a hygrometer. Hygrometer. It's called a hygrometer. Here's a little tool I think we could all use in our life. It's called a hygrometer. Okay, this is going to tell you what is your actual humidity actually here, right here, where you're working, right here. Not the humidity that your weather app is telling you is going on. Okay, not the humidity in your house, not the humidity in your workroom or your bedroom. Like, carry this with you at all times. Just put it. Just put it in your bra, carry it with you at all times, okay? Hygrometer, you need one. Get you a hygrometer. Hey baby, got a hygrometer? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Hygrometer, you need it, get one. I think I've covered everything and it probably was overwhelming and <laughs> I hope that it helps. I hope that it makes sense. Basically, don't let bath bombs rule you. You rule the bath bomb, okay? Find a recipe that works for your humidity. Guys, I hope that that helps clarify humidity just a little bit. I don't know if I did. I don't know if I made things worse or not. And I'm sorry if I did. Um, but I hope that it helps a little bit. I want to say thank you to our Patreon donors who have been amazing. We just started a Patreon last month. We already have 100 subscribers. And I am like beyond floored at your support. And I just want to thank you so much. If you would like more in-depth information, behind the scenes access, um, recipes that I'm working on, ideas I'm working on, photography tips, random lives that I just do. I just start a live stream. Uh, if you want any access to that, you should definitely consider joining our Patreon and I will put a link for that below. You should also come visit us at Bath, Fizz and Foam, Bath, Bomb, and Bubble Bar Support Group on Facebook. We're a community of helpful, kind, friendly makers. So we would love to see you there. Check out the links below. That's all I got for you. Happy. <laughs>